It's time for Twig. This week at Google, episode 33. We're live from Austin at South by Southwest. We actually are in person with Gina Trapani, the great Jeff Jarvis, and a cast of thousands. This week in Google is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 33 for March 13th, 2010. Three Bones. This Week in Google is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Business travel can kill your company's profits, so do more, save more, and travel less with GoToMeeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash twig. It's time for Twig this week in Google, our special South by Southwest edition, and we're here in Austin, Texas. Thanks to the great folks at the Texas co-working facility in downtown Austin, 206th Street and Paul. We thank you for your hospitality. We also thank the folks at New Tech who have set up a uh, TriCaster HD and a bunch of high-def cameras. And uh, this is a nice setup. This is a really nice setup. So we even have a few people live in the audience who are forced, compelled to stand, which I think is only fair. You should have to stand if you want to watch this show. I am sitting with Gina Trapani in, in the flesh. It's so nice. I've never met you. First time we've ever met. <laughs> it seems so weird. I got to hug Leo. The I, think of the this, internet. I think this happens <laughs> at South by Southwest is that you actually meet people that you've known for years but never met. Absolutely. You're no longer just a floating head. It's so exciting. <laughs> kind of still am. Also, Jeff Jarvis. Hey, nice hey. to meet you. We've Good never met you. either. Never met either. No. It's so great. And it's Jake crazy. Jarvis, your son is here with you. Yep. That's so cute, father and son. Just accompany him. Oh, isn't that great? So this is my first. You, you, you guys, Jeff and Jake, you've been here three times. Mm -hmm. Gina's been six times. I think this is my sixth, yeah. What was it like in the old days? You know, I can't even really speak. The old days were truly like 2000. The people who were here 10 years ago, right. and there's a Flickr set somewhere and that Matt, Matt Howie's in, and he's in the audience here, that's like 2000, like the really early South By, you know, and everyone's looking very young and spry. And, we'll get Matt uh, on. Yeah, young. Yeah, we should, we should get Matt we'll on. Get he, Matt he's going to talk about the old days. Like. I would just be a poser talking about the olden days of South By, yeah, South by Southwest. Yeah. Uh, well, six is a long time ago. Six, six is a while. It's a lot bigger. Yeah. It's pre Twitter, for God's sake. It's pre I know, pre Twitter. Did what Twitter did we change? do? South by, I mean, Twitter debuted at South by in 2007, and, and that really was the big debut. Mm -hmm. it, Twitter amplifies the fact that there are 50 things going on right. during the time, the thing that you're at, and it makes you feel like, should I be here? Should I be and there? And didn't Twitter make it easier to people to coalesce? For Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. to say, I got wine, and boom. Definitely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. Absolutely. Although, you know, the year that, that Twitter kind of got big here, what was that? 2007. 2007. Um, I was still, I was sort of the still, the, the, the late adopter. I was the one standing in the hallway kind of staring Where at the screen everybody? being like, what, it, what is this thing? And that's actually when I signed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so. And then so, Four, yeah. uh, Foursquare became big last year. This year, there doesn't seem to be an application everybody's kind of using. Gowalla's here, Foursquare's here, Twitter's here. What was the here. one Scoble was talking about a minute ago? Plancast. I yeah, love yeah. Plancast. Well, then another one he, uh, um, that, that shows you all the sign-ins on Gowalla. Uh, and vicariously. Vicariously. Vicarious.ly. But it's Gowalla-based, or is it a bunch of other ones? Jake Jarvis uh, I'm not sure. Here. He said it just it shows you like blips of people showing up at different places. It doesn't show you who they are. It just shows like if you see a blob of people, right. you know to go there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Have you guys seen Sit By Us? No, what's that? Uh, it's sitby.us. It's uh, you're in South. By, you're at a panel at South by Southwest, and you check in and say where you're sitting. I love that. And then people can figure out <laughs> where you are in the room. This has really become a, a, a test tube for all of these social. It's a social mm -hmm. media event now. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's, it, you know, I'm sure it was web design early on and things like that. Yeah, it was. I, I, I tweeted today this morning just to start a game going, and I said that South by Southwest is not a conference. It's a tribal gathering. And then I started some other names going. People came back with what it was, and I had a whole bunch of what it really is. But but to me, it is a tribal gathering. It's you you see these people you haven't seen, and mm -hmm. if you ask me, that's the future of conferences. Nobody really wants needs or wants to see uh, booths anymore. So trade shows that rely on booths are kind of dwindling, except for CES. Maybe that's the one exception. Mm -hmm. CBET in Germany, uh, and I think even panels. You know, there's too many panels here. You can't see. You can only at best you could see one tenth of the panels that are available. 
and it's a classic case of the hallway being the real event. The lobby con. You want to you turn it inside out. It's a yeah. paradox of choice. You're like, I can't even deal with dashing across the convention center and making it to the other thing or choosing. So I've been to one panel, hallways. and it was truncated by a fire alarm. And you were glad to be here. I was actually glad. It was it was Mark Cuban and, and uh, Avner Ronan. And uh, Avner's uh, the guy at Boxy, and I thought he would be a very interesting person to listen to. But Mark Cuban is so annoyingly opinionated. I had, I just was like, I couldn't. It was. It, I was so glad the alarm went off. It, it <laughs> you sounds didn't like pull it, was, it, did you, Leo? No. <laughs> a case of the big media personality sort of slamming the quiet, thoughtful. Yeah. Key. He said, "Are you making money?" Yeah. I no, made money. It's a case of Mark Cuban being a. You said it before, Leo. Uh, a dick. A prig. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this! On the more positive note, there is a hardcover edition of Gina's book. Hold it up, Gina. Hold the it Complete up. Guide Long. to Google Wave. Your co-author Adam is here. Also, we have to say hi to him. Yes, he is. He is. This is the debut. First no one's edition. ever first at first copies that anyone's ever seen so besides cool. all of us. Yeah, first edition. It's up uh, available for order on the website completewaveguide.com. Right? Yeah, this is my third book. This is my third so book. It's not new to you to see a first edition, but it is not. But there's a, there's a lot of things that are new about this book for me. So I decided not to sort of publish it the traditional way, right. like through a traditional public publishing house. So this was really a DIY kind of experiment. Got together with a small company in San Diego, and we said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do this book together. We're gonna design it. We're gonna copy edit it. We're gonna make the index. We're gonna do the screenshots. We're gonna do it collaboratively in this wiki, wow. and we're gonna we're gonna print it ourselves because speed was of the essence, right? Because right. Wave just continuously changes. We right. wanted to get this book out the door, and I wanted to have more control. And this is the this is the result. And we got to do some really cool stuff with this book. Um, this is the first edition. The preview PDF was was out several months months ago. Um, but this book, we, Adam and I just we blew it out. There's two new chapters, tons of screenshots, tons of use cases. I mean, the focus of the book is just answer the question, illustrate the answers to the question, you know, what is the point of Wave? So did we tried you, to do that. Did you print a bunch or is it more print on demand and you can update it as you go? Well, so what we did, well, the, the, the ultimate goal is to make it more print on demand so that people can get the current content of the, you know, of the wiki in, in their hard copy. Are you going to use but, Lulu? How are you going to do that? Well, so what we did for this first print run, uh, you know, that we were, we were thinking, oh, we'll just go with Lulu, but we got, we got to do this really neat thing. We hooked up with this, um, or Three Ones, my publisher, hooked up with this uh, charity in San Diego, which provides job placement for uh, developmentally disabled adults. These are people who want and need jobs, um, but ha having a hard time finding them. Anyway, they, they had enough faith in us to do a first print run of a couple, few thousand copies, and they're going to be doing all the book fulfillment and the, wow. the orders wow. processing and returns. So, so when you buy a copy of the print book, which is, is $25, half of that money goes toward this charity. Um, so, you know, nothing against Lulu. They're a great service, uh, and they print beautiful books. But, uh, but, but this is a really good opportunity to sort of make your, you know, send your money to the, the right places. So I'm really excited about that part. If you don't want to kill trees, there's still the PDF version, nine bucks. Buy it straight through the website. If you subscribe, do you get updates automatically on the PDF? Uh, if version? you bought the preview PDF, you will get the first edition free as a thank you for supporting us early on. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to be able to do that, but we decided to do that because it only made sense. And the whole book is, you know, available to read for free on the website. And so the idea is to turn around kind of new editions as Wave uh, evolves <clears throat> and changes as quickly as possible. So we're trying to figure out a way to kind of meld this like web publishing and, and, and book publishing. But we put a lot of work into this thing. I mean, my, we had a copy editor just slaved over the index in this book. You know, because we're dealing with a print book, you need an index. You There's no index. control F. Right. You can't right. do a find for a word, you know? Yeah. How <laughs> antiquated is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's, I know, it's sad, crazy. It? <laughs> a human indexing the book, it was amazing. I didn't even really think those about that pros. part of the process. Those but people are yeah. pros. Oh, yeah, and my, and my copy editor, Marianne yeah. at 3 one yeah, she was I amazing. I click the pages. Yeah, it was really hard, you know, putting, I use Google URL shortener for the particular really long and complicated URLs in the text of the book because That's you don't want idea. to print long URLs. Yeah. yeah, so I'm totally excited. It's available now. It literally just went live today. Brand new. So I hope Yay. everyone will, uh, will check it out. And if you decide and to you kill And you can trees, buy it where, Gina? <laughs> completewaveguide.com. Yes. So good. And thank you to all the listeners who, who bought the early copies uh, and have just been, you know, visited the site and checked it out. I, I really appreciate it. I'm really excited about Wave. Uh, I know there's been a lot of backlash, a lot of people saying that, you know, it's dumb, there's no good, there's no obvious use. But to me, 
you know, like Wave represents this kind of future in real-time Have real you seen a new good application on top of it lately or anything? Uh, I think that Google is gearing up to launch some really cool plugins to Wave for Google I.O. in May. Uh, so I think they're rolling out a new API for, 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 the, for uh, robots for building Wave extensions. Um, they've been launching a few new things here and there, like email notifications just got built in last week, so you can get email notifications. Right. Uh, there's a link now, extensions, where you can, you can browse and install extensions inside Wave pretty easily. And I think they're going to have some goodies uh, come May. So, um, you know, Wave is still, it's still preview. It's not even beta yet. So I think we're going to see some, some really cool, uh, cool stuff come down the pipe. You can get the book now, The Complete Guide to Google Wave at Google Wave, CompleteWaveGuide.com. <laughs> Never will get that right. Thank goodness it's printed on the back. You need to give you, Leo his own short URL. For I know. <laughs> I know. No I kidding. <laughs> so Google's testing internet TV, TV internet search. That is just the weirdest thing ever. They're doing this with Dish. I don't even know how widespread this is. It's just executives right just now. Just to start, yeah. So what is Google's plan with this? What do they want to do? Make it possible for you to search your TV? Yeah, organize everything. What, what don't they want to organize? Right. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's funny. We have stories about Google Display Ads, Google Radio, Google Now TV Search. I mean, Google really is in, into everything these days. So they're te this is according to Information Week, uh, but actually they're quoting it at a Wall Street Journal report, so we'll give credit to Wall Street Journal for this. They're testing a search service that would enable users to find video content on conventional TV on the Internet and on the internet. Actually, this would be good for us because as a video show, it's hard to search us. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to do it? Are they going to transcribe it? What are they going to do? I'm not sure exactly, yeah. but I think it's, it is a bit of the holy grail here. You know, I, my theory is that uh, right before the Oscars, WABC TV in New York was at war with uh, Oh, wasn't that something? And uh, 15 and they, minutes into the red carpet, somebody they blinked. turned it back on. Yeah. Um, but what's going to happen here, in my view, is that uh, more and more stations are going to ask for money, get money from the cable operators. It's going to go through to the consumer. The prices are going to go up. And the FCC is finally going to demand a la carte. And if that happens, it's going to kill tons of cable networks. And that's the beginning of Internet TV. That's oh, when it all starts to I look just, like just, just woke me TV. Up. I got excited then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good news. That's not uh, bad news at all. Yeah. I, think, I think, in fact, we should be pushing for it more and more. Uh, the, I forget where it was. I saw a list today, a very good list, of the per-channel cost for what we pay for cable. Uh, I, be not being a real man and not watching sports, don't give a damn about any sports station except my daughter, Jake's sister, likes tennis. Jake does, too, once in a while, so do I. That's the only one we watch. I think that's like four cents. ESPN is four dollars and sixty cents a month, and I don't watch it. Right. Fox Sports is but two dollars and sixty-three cents a month. I don't watch it, and it's bundled. Forty percent of what I pay to cable, uh, or, or the fees that go to channels, are sports. Right. Plus Spanish stuff. I should speak it. I'm sorry, but I don't. Right. Plus all this other stuff that I don't pay for, and I think we're going to finally hit the point where we are subsidizing a whole bunch of channels. So that's going to kill. If this ever happens, if the FCC finally does protect us. That's unfortunate because it's going to support sports channels. They're not going away. No. But maybe the niche channel, Discovery Science or Discovery History, that's going to go yeah, away. Yeah, it'll go away. But then again, <clears throat> somewhere out there, there is the Leo Laporte of science geeks. There is. His name can, is Miles O'Brien, and he does great stuff. Right. And um, so maybe you think it's an opportunity for something like that. I think but they don't have, uh, we don't have, I should say, the budgets to do those kinds of productions. Not that kind of production, uh, but... Maybe you we tell will. Me, but Maybe we will if everybody migrates to that. That A and B, you can still reduce the cost to make a good, respectable production. Right. I mean, you more expensive than this sitting around the table, uh, but still cheaper than the way big old TV does. Right. It, no? Right. Well, it, it, you know, it, it's you can whine and moan all you want. It's not. There's nothing you can do to change it. So. So once you're there, once all this becomes, all of it becomes TV, then searching that and finding that makes stuff sense. Is is the the holy grail? They're using Android They're using as Android. the operating system for set top boxes, buddy boxes, and TVs. And I take it back. It is not. Dish executives, it is Google employees that are getting the access to this. Didn't they learn anything from Buzz? I was going to say. <laughs> Don't try it there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, we know Google employees are not normal. A stranger crew you couldn't imagine yeah. for testing. So, uh, I, well, we don't know anything more about that. That's basically what we know. So, an interesting, uh, interesting insight into what, what Google is all about. Speaking of the FCC, I've just got to brag for one second. Uh, a week ago, I got to testify before the FCC about. Um, uh, the public interest for TV stations. 
And so I said, as I began my testimony, I said, I want you to indulge me. Years ago, I have had uh, fights with the FCC over freedom of speech through FOIAs, and I want to begin my testimony today with one word. Baba Booey. Oh, man. Howard Stern must have loved said, you. Oh, he did. He did. It was on the air a couple oh, days later. He loved Oh, man. He must have I loved you. And do and you think anybody got it? A few of the FCC guys laughed. I mean, they, yeah, they got it. I was so proud. <laughs> I got Baba Booey. I mentioned it three times at the FCC. And you, tweet, uh, you tweeted the uh, a, a picture, a capture from the screen of the closed caption person. And you said, whoever's doing the closed captioning clearly isn't a Stern fan. It says, to begin with one word, Bob Bubbly Ba. <laughs> Google Voice. <laughs> YouTube captions. Yeah, Bob Bubbly Ba. That's pretty funny. That's very Take funny. Take that, FCC. It does look like Google Voice might have, might does, have done that. <laughs> Somebody sent me a, a I guess the, I guess YouTube has now opened up the, uh, the automatic transcription to YouTube videos. So some of our videos that are on YouTube, people are turning it on and getting some less than ideal results. I, I got an email. It doesn't do a very good job. Someone said that, it, that it's on by default. Uh, is it? Yeah, one of the producers of The Guild, which is this really good web show, is right. uploading, uploading their latest season to YouTube, and uh, he, he wrote me to say that a lot of people are saying that uh, it's on by default, and, you know, viewers are, you know, upset that it's not perfect. Well, it's not very good. It's not very good, right? I haven't watched one of our shows with it on, is it? I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it now. I've only heard from people who have, so that's a little scary. They've also added variable speeds to YouTube video. So this is part of their HTML5 HTML5 experiment, fun. which I love, and I and I just, you know, I, I turn it on all my There's browsers. There's a whole panel here at South by Southwest about fun with HTML5 video, I think on Monday. Well, this must be part of it because if you're using... So you need to go to youtube.com slash html5 and then it'll say, oh, would you like to join the beta? There's a link kind of buried in the text there and you click that and from now on, I guess when you go to YouTube, you've got a cookie set and it will default to html5 instead of flash video. If you've got it going, then next to the play pause button is a little arrow. It's very hard to see, a little red arrow. And if you click that arrow, a panel with a tortoise and a hare opens up and a slider. And you can make the videos. I don't know why you'd want to do this. Well, well considering how fast I usually talk, some people might like to have that, actually. Slow it down. Yeah, people do it for podcasts all the time, and they're listening they to do. this audio, right? And this yeah. actually does what people do, which is it pitch shifts, so the audio doesn't sound weird. Uh, it sounds normal, but it speed it up. Right, so you, so you, you can get through. Half and, the time. And, you know, every, it's, it's well known that the human brain actually has better comprehension when stuff is faster. So we actually understand it better. So I, I've never minded if people listen to our uh, podcasts faster. Um, and I guess you could now do video podcasts faster. That's kind of cool. If captions are annoying you, though, and YouTube, if you go to your account, playbook setup, playback setup, and captions, you can, oh, you can turn it uncheck off? always show captions, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean it turns them on always? How annoying this is, is word, that? Word on the street. <laughs> I haven't verified, How but yeah. How annoying is that? If captions are annoying you, though, you can. I'm going to check my account. YouTube has started to, uh, to uh, cover live uh, sports, streaming, well, it's the Indian Premier League cricket tournament, but uh, it is live. Um, I, has, is this new to YouTube? I don't remember them doing much live. They did, that's, they, that's, they did the first, that's the first effort. They announced it a little bit ago, and I think it's just starting. They're, they have all 60 of the cricket matches. I've never watched cricket. That would be one where you'd have a little slider. would be very handy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my captions are on right now on my YouTube this account. This is and I beer. <laughs> it is beer. <laughs> is somebody trying to get us drunk? <laughs> Clearly, we need to do this uh, live and in person more often. Uh, I yeah. had no idea. Gina so, and I have decided we're already moving to Petaluma. Would you please? We would love to have you up there. It's so nice there. You know, we're trying. This is, um, uh, I don't know how well, you know, remember Google says they're going to do gigabit Ethernet or gigabit Internet, rather, in five communities nationwide. You have to be between 50 and 500,000. My town, the little town of Petaluma, the city fathers or whoever they are, the mothers, got the idea that we should be participating in this. And then they've asked me to kind of, you know, launch a grassroots effort. Because it would be great for Twit to have gigabit yes. internet. We pay a lot of money for a tenth of that or a hundred. Pika's every pushing every time. My mayor didn't respond to my email. He's lost my vote forever. Twit? Bloomberg? Sorry. Mayor Bloomberg? No, 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 in my little town in New Jersey. Oh, okay. Um, I thought you lived in Manhattan for no, some reason. No, no, no. You no, seem no. so urbane. <laughs> 
That's true. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have kids who like oxygen and schools. Oh, and things. oh, the heck with that. It's overrated. <laughs> yeah, no, I think any time between, between 50 and 50,000 should be lobbying for this. But I'm going to make oh, a yeah. web page. We're going to get, and I, you know, uh, I guess, it, I don't know what Google is going to look at, but I would imagine if, if, you know, there's a grassroots movement within the town to, to get that gigabit of internet, that'd be awesome. It was Topeka that changed their name, right? Yeah, uh, was it Topeka? Somebody changed their Somebody name. Somebody changed their name, so yeah. Google Kansas, it was Topeka, yeah. Well, we're, I haven't so set it up we yet. Should, the chat room and everybody, we should brainstorm and create incredibly impressive things that uh, Petaluma, Petaluma can do. What could Petaluma do? Well, we've got Twit. I think that should be enough. What more does Google want? Home Are you listening, Google? Home of the President Google? of the Internet. Home of the President of the Internet. Shouldn't the President have the best access? Of the Internet. Of the Internet, anyway. So we're going to take a break, come back with more. This is This Week in Google, live from Austin. And at South by Southwest is a lot of fun. Jake Jarvis is here. I should talk to you in a, just a second, find out what you think, yeah, representing the future and all that. Gina Trapani from San Diego. She's visiting. It's so nice to see you in person for the first time. Jeff Jarvis also. And Gina's book is out. If you go to completewaveguide.com, you can get your copy of it. Don't forget, of course, what would Google do? which uh, is still out. Thank you, thank you. For <laughs> it's still, it's still there and still selling very well on Amazon.com. More with Twig in just a moment. But first, I want to mention our friends at GoToMeeting. If you are uh, currently uh, wondering, you know, why am I traveling? Why am I spending all this time on the road driving across town for meetings or worse, flying across country in the middle seat for meetings? And, and you haven't really taking a look at GoToMeeting, I want you to do so. This is a way that you can travel less and yet get more done. We, we're all doing it now. I mean, nobody wants to spend the money and the time and the stress traveling, so we do conference calls, but they're so unvisual. I mean, you really need to be able to show them the PowerPoint or the keynote presentation, maybe share spreadsheet data, collaborate on documents. That's what GoToMeeting lets you do. From the folks at Citrix, they know remote access. They've got it wired. They really have the Best technology. It's secure, 128-bit encrypted, end-to-end. -end. Um, it's fast. That's very important very reliable. And you can try it free. How about that? By going to gotomeeting.com slash twig. G-O-T-O meeting.com slash twig. 30 days free, unlimited meetings. But you know, the neat thing, it's only $49 a month when you, when you decide to buy. And, and you never have to watch the length of the meeting or the number of meetings. It's unlimited. Use it 24-7 if you want. Free for the first month. Go to meeting.com slash twig. We thank them so much for their support of this week in Google. Netflix, I don't know if this isn't really a Google story, but it's kind of relevant to the cloud. Netflix had a contest, remember, last year to improve their recommendations. And a million-dollar prize, um, a pair of researchers from the University of Texas were able to win that million-dollar, uh, is that right, a million-dollar prize. Unfortunately... Uh, the anonymized data which was used for the contest apparently, including movie recommendations and choices made by hundreds of thousands of customers, could be used to identify them. That's what the researchers figured out. I'm sorry. That wasn't the team that won. They took the data and said, hmm, you know, we can show, this is the name of their paper, robust de-anonymization of large data sets. How to break anonymity of Netflix prize data set. Party poopers. They're from here in, in Austin. Jeez. We should you we see? should go get them. Hook them horns. <laughs> you got to do this right. All right. I always think of that as Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the Federal Trade Commission um, uh, said, "Wait, we'll, we'll hold on there," and a, a lawsuit. Um, uh, has been filed, and that means Netflix is going to shelve its plans for the sequel. It's really too bad because because that kind of data, that aggregate data, if we can find the way to anonymize it, really has value for research. You know, I've written about this when it comes to medicine, that um, if if we knew what happened in my latest medical condition, if we knew what people were doing 24 hours before they got it, maybe there's something in there that's right. valuable. And if we just lock everything in the earth down to privacy. Uh, we're, we're losing something as a society. We're losing an opportunity. I agree. I've applied uh, just recently for the Personal Genome Project. This is something that um, uh, a Harvard geneticist is doing. And what, they're, what they ask you to do is submit your genome uh, and then submit all of your medical records. Everything. Your height, your weight, your hair color, everything. Your, your, they call it your phenotype. And um, by doing that, uh, they can match the two together, but one of the things they say is 
we can't guarantee the anonymity, so we're going to warn you right up front. We're going to print your name. We're going to tell everybody. You're, in fact, we, they are even offering for the – they've got 11 people who have done it so far, including um, uh, Esther Dyson is the most famous. Uh, uh, you, can, you can get a strain of Esther Dyson's cells because she participated in it if you want because the researchers need that and so this would be wouldn't be any good if they had to they they basically said recognizing the kinds of things that these guys at UT have realized you can't anonymize these data sets so we're not going to promise it we're going to in no. fact make it public, public and what you can do with default, it right Jake yeah. what was the uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, Christmas um, napkin the big bang theory the big bang theory that's it uh, that's a TV show uh, uh, yes. well, who, who got his uh, so penny gave Sheldon well, she works at a restaurant, and Leonard Nimoy came into her restaurant, so she saved the napkin for Sheldon. And it has his... He was happy that he could create his own Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, how far off are we from that, really? I, mean, I, I, I think you could sell uh, Leo kits. Well, if I... You know, I, I applied. You have to get accepted to this. But if I get accepted, they draw blood. You actually have to fly to Cambridge. And they draw blood. They do the genotype. Then they do a long questionnaire. If you get accepted and you have to... What's go, the basis of acceptance? Uh, you have to, uh, besides applying, you have to fill out questionnaires. And, and they really... One of the things you really have to do is say, I understand the risks of what I'm doing. And it's not just risks to you. It's risks to your family. Yeah, what does is, what is your wife well, and family... They have to approve it, too. They oh, have to so say yes, too. Absolutely. Well. But what about your unborn children? <laughs> there are they none of those. <laughs> there are none of those. So that's one of the reasons I are feel comfortable. Are you sure? I'm they positive. <laughs> there's, there's no way that could happen. So, uh, But my kids will have to say yes because uh, half of their genotype will be known. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I have a predisposition towards, you know, I don't know, alcoholism or something, it could hurt them in the, in the marketplace. It's a, it, but it's exactly as you say, Jeff. It, you lose something in society b uh, by this. And, and uh, I think you, we have to deal with this. Uh, you know, today Dana Boyd, who's brilliant, uh, gave a keynote here at South by Southwest about privacy and publicity and raising a lot of good concerns and, 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 and when companies kind of don't realize how they think that something's a little bit public, they make it very public what that does. And that's all true. But I think we never talk about the benefits of publicness that we have today. And what that's can a good happen. point. I mean, you're, you're, you, like I, uh, like me, uh, are very public and yes. open. You were open about your surgery, about your condition. And, um, and so you, you told, think there's you value told the to world it. that I was incontinent and impotent. Yes, yes <laughs> after you did. But, but, but you see the value in that, Absolutely. and you're willing to take that chance. Absolutely. Yeah. So these are the, I'm just showing you the public profiles. They, they have people's names. They have everything about them. You can, like I said, you can get a cell strain from them. It, it, it's out there, and if I get accepted, it'll be out there for me. But I feel like I, have, I, can, I can, since I already do live in public, I can... I can accept that uh, lack of privacy, and it's and it is for the public wheel. So it's worth doing that for those of us who are willing to do that. It's worth doing. Yeah, that. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but you also can't ask anybody who's you know just because I'm a member of Netflix. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> you know, my data shouldn't be public necessarily, no, right? It's a it's a it's got to be informed consent. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's important, as you say, to to recognize the value in some in 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 this pub living in public too. There is some value to it. It's not merely. Exhibitionism. On I'm not our part. a Netflix customer. Are there dirty movies at Netflix, or just embarrassing there are. ones? There are. Well, they're not X-rated movies, but there are. There are certainly sufficiently dirty that. Well, you know, I'm on this thing called Blippy, which. <laughs> what are you nodding? You're going yeah. yeah. So Blippy.com is a Twitter, but what what it tweets automatically is what you buy. So your Netflix is on there, your iTunes is on there, and uh, as well as your credit cards if you put them on there. And I, so I, I'm fairly public. But every once in a while, a movie crosses the stream that I'm going, oh, I don't know if I should really have mentioned that. I didn't know if they, uh, you know, maybe my, my, my audience wouldn't like the, uh, the gay school girl uh, in prison movies that I, that I like. And so, you, uh, so you opt to have your Netflix data you public that. then. And it, do you do it on a per case basis? Like, uh, you could, but who's going to do that? But who's going to take the time to do that, right? right? So you just decided to. But they do. Blippi gives you that, uh, that granularity. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've got, and again, Speaking to your point, I've got so much out of seeing what other people buy. I've bought stuff that they, I go, oh, that's great, or that movie is great. Or, you know, so there's real value to our sharing this information. I guess it's just a question of in, informed consent yeah. and, mm -hmm. and knowing what yeah. you're doing. Absolutely. But it works for me. Uh, Google Buzz is going to um, improve. You know, are, are you disappointed with the lack of speed? I was talking to somebody yesterday, the speed in improvements in Buzz. Do you feel like they made a commitment? How about you, Jake? Do you use Buzz? No, I don't. You use Twitter? Yep. 
Why don't you use Buzz? It's just, I, I don't like the fact that it's in Gmail. It's just, yeah. if it was separate, I might consider using it. Well, that's but, problem one. In fact, that's one of the things they're addressing, more inbox management features. Yep. And, well, and, and, and that was Dana Boyd's main point today. Jake was there with me. That um, the big mistake was that they mixed the public and private. Well, people, she said people thought their email was becoming public because Buzz it's was public. It's not clear, is right. it? Right, no. no. And it's just, it shows up, like, when you click all mail, it's just all there. It's too much to handle. It's also not clear which buzzes are public and which buzzes are private. Mm-hmm. Right. And again, for people like you and me, Jeff, we don't care. <laughs> but I can easily see why I'll other people I'll show you my would. tattoos. Yeah, I can that. easily see why other people would care. Right. So I guess Google's, uh, uh, according to a Clint Bolton writing in Google Watch, um, the buzz team is listening to your pleas. They sent out a brief buzz that it's working on two features to cut down the noise. Um, one, settings to control what gets sent to your inbox, yay. Although we've all figured out how to filter it. Yep. But this way you don't have to do that. You'll be able to choose whether uh, these buzz items get sent to your inbox. Comments on your posts, comments on posts after you comment on them, comments on posts after you're at replied on them. See, I just turn it all off. This seems like a lot of configuration. Yeah. This is, yes. the, this is the, the, like, almost too many choices thing that Android suffers from a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's great geeks to have choices. Geeks love that. Uh, geeks love it, and I, and I love it, but it's, like, so many choices. I, you know, I am filtering Buzz so it doesn't show up in my inbox. But we have no granularity. I just filter yeah, everything label Buzz. Right. It's right. out. And I'm also, I'm also, it bothers me to see that big unread number, so I'm using a Grease Monkey user script to actually hide the number so that I can just dip in when I want, but I don't have, like, inbox guilt. Like, I have their unread items. Twitter, you can go to whenever you want, but Buzz, it makes you feel obligated to it click does. that and it read it. It does. It's right. like, I've got to make the, that. It's the email metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, so that's the problem. You're mixing metaphors. That's mm -hmm. really the problem here. Yep. So I don't have any problem with having huge numbers of unread messages in any of my inboxes. So I just gave up I on know. that. I know. You've not read some of mine. <laughs> I gave up on that a long time ago. Yeah. You just, you can't. I mean, come on. You really, you're in box zero. See, Merlin's still impacted you, Gina. I, I am. Yeah. I am because I'm a, a special kind of give it uptight. Up. Really? Uh, you know, well, you mean, it's just, I, I, I worry that something important is just going to fall down the stream. I'm not going to fall well, up I on know it. it's going to fall down the stream. <laughs> and if it comes back up again, that's, that's actually the rule you gave me. But like, is it, you if know, it comes back again, then okay. Then but it's important. It is like a to-do list. But like as a freelancer, something important could mean like my next paycheck. You know what I mean? So it just becomes like, you, you, you know what I mean? So at Lifehacker, we got tons and tons of email in our tips box. I could dip into, check out. And if I miss something, it was right. like, it'll bubble up fine. But, you know, if I'm a freelancer talking to clients and looking sense. for work, then I, yeah. or that's request the from the boss. That's like, why email is so different. That's why they mixing metaphors didn't work. Because right. there is a difference between your buzzes and your tweets yeah. and your email. Your email is, is should be somehow separated and sacrosanct. Have, have, has anyone done any studies yet on how much of one's Twitter feed is read on average? No, we have this assumption that the kind of the rate base, the, the circulation of Twitter is that everybody reads it, but not and of course. Obviously not. Yeah, obviously not. not. Although I've talked to people who go back, scroll back what they missed. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. agree. Yeah. That's crazy right, talk. But that's not an inbox. That's a stream. There's a, right. different, a stream passes by and an inbox and you, right. sits there and waits that's for you and haunts you with an unread n number. <laughs> you, don't, you weren't saying that you do that, Jake. No, no. No, no. You just you, you dip it in whenever right. you, whenever you see I it. I thought I was going to use the lists to create those people I really don't want to miss. There are some people I don't want to miss, but I haven't used it that way. I Because it's that. another damn stream to... Yeah. yeah. Who has time? Yeah. 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 Jake, it's so nice to see you. Anything you'd you like do. to say about South by Southwest? Are you excited about it? It was this? good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Jake will be a freshman in college next year. Yep. You don't know where yet, do you? Not yet, no. no. How's your daughter? Uh, uh, no, still just still waiting. Still Any yes. minute now, though, right? Right. I mean, soon. He's gotten uh, next couple weeks. Seconds. Oh, you did? Uh, Rochester. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank that's you. Awesome. That's a great school. You want to yeah. go to a tech school. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a great yeah. school. So, so you got that in your back pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now we get to let the let the other guys yep. decide. <laughs> They're worthy of you. Next few weeks. That's great. Yep. Why don't we bring Matt? Is Matt here? Did Matt Howie come back? Yeah. Come on nice. over, Matt. We'd love to have yeah. you come on over. Matt Ooh, Howie is a, a legend on the internet. This guy's my hero. Yeah. Meta Meta filter. Yep. Uh, and uh, and what else are you doing these days, Matt? Uh, Fuly.com. Like what is Fuly? Uh, Get real um, close to the mic, yeah. Completely public, open, miles per gallon tracker. So, like, fuel, ly.com. It's pretty cool because you can, like, you know, if you're looking for a new car, you can see real world mileage from, like, 25,000 people. So you have something to think. You have a thought about, then, this notion that some, there's some value to being public in your data. Yeah, and we were totally upfront about that. And we still get, like, an email a week, people going, I don't want people to know I fueled up. <laughs> 
<laughs> or that I got terrible gas mileage or people can you can just go to the browsing vehicles to see like a, this a is, random this vehicle. This is fantastic. Yeah. So how does that happen automatically? No, you can SMS us or you can use a web app uh, to just pop in your miles. Price so this is gallons. like Blippi and a lot of other you services. Could, could you connect it to Blippi? Is there is there is there other data? Does Blippi yeah. su- There's an RSS out. Data? There's an RSS out for the. Yeah, data Blippi works. right now is like they do the deals with the companies and the credit cards. Uh, I don't think they have a way of adding stuff to it, which is too bad. They really ought to. That would be really interesting. Philip, this is Philip level. Kaplan's uh, one of he's right. one of oh, those cool. guys involved in the startup. Well, it's so nice to see you, Matt. So yeah. so what was it like in the old days at South by Southwest? Uh, it was tiny. Really? Like, yeah. So I've been here. This is my. T- Seventh year, I've been here ten years. Ten years ago, we did like a the first weblogs panel ever. Like forty people showed up. Uh, <laughs> I am a blogger. And then the tech, uh, you know, boom, and then bust happened. And then South by Southwest went from like five hundred people down to maybe one hundred and fifty people. No, like two thousand one, two. There's for more interactive. people in the, in the bar downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one row of four, you know, rooms. That was it. Wow. And there would be. Th- th- two or three things happening at one time and then it'd be like four panels at once now right. it's 23 it's, it's in so every many slot. at the same time it drives and, me crazy and three different buildings yeah. and yeah there's uh, over 10,000 people here for it I mean, really? it's just crazy yeah, it's what, why do you think that is? What's what's happened? Uh, it used to just be like blogger summer camp I mean right. like you knew the 150 people they're all right. sort of active bloggers and it was like you know seeing friends again it's hard to get you know more than five people right. be recognized together um, in the same place now, finding them among like a thousand people at a party, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, that age is so much over. I was talking to Dave Weiner through links about, about the original blogger cons that he held. Right. And there was kind of a magical moment in the blog world where you really had that, gee, I get to meet you moment and you knew everybody, but <laughs> is that over? <laughs> It's still kind of when you, I mean, just for me to see you guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah you still, still get that experience, right? So, Matt, you're feeling well? Because you, you had an amazing blog. Talk about living in public. You had an amazing blog post. A yeah. little, uh, what was that, two, three months ago? Which we talked about on the show at length. Yeah. We did, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I missed that show. Um, uh, you were yeah. busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wrote a post for friends, and I thought, you know, there weren't that many stories out there on the web. I might as well share it and see what other people... I've got, like, hundreds of emails about it, but I got 30, 40 emails from people with the exact same condition. That was really awesome. Just, like, what was you know, it? public and private data. Like, right. people telling me their health story. Right. And, like, you know, all but two or three of them had great stories. Any, like, any regrets at all? Any any single regret from revealing? No, not no. at all. No, Sorry. zero. Zip. Yep. I Except agree. people thought it was cancer and were like... <laughs> I'd be like, about you and, yeah. and, and most of us never will get that, you know? Yeah, I mean, the first Twitter post I made sounded pretty grave. Right. Like, I collapsed, had seizures, and I'm going to have to have brain surgery. Right. Uh, within, you know, 12 hours. Uh, it, was, so, it was traumatizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, was. oh, and then it sort of cleared, you know, got... The news got better in a day or two, and then I started to, like, talk people down. I knew I, that post had to be like, calm down. It's, I'm not going to die, everyone. But... <laughs> Do you, do you, what is it that makes some people like Jeff and me and you public and willing to pu- post this publicly and others think we're nuts? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I'm an introverted person, too. It's I weird. think we're all oh, introverts. I, I think mean, I, learned it, I, learned it from, I learned it from the web. I learned it from the value of the blog. By, by, I mean, I started my blog out on September 11 and, and that trauma of wow. having been there. And um, I saw, I, I'll always remember the most important you know, media education I ever had was when two bloggers in LA, uh, famous ones, Matt Welch and Ken Lane, saw my first posts, thanks to Nick Denton, and said something about them and linked to them. And then I responded, and I realized it's a conversation. Distant and, and distributed, but a conversation. And that was a, a pathetic commentary of my life that was a life-changing moment, but it was. And by revealing, you saw that value that comes back. I mean, haven't you learned that from the beginning of blogging? That, yeah, yeah, that, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, you put it out. You put out whatever. You th- better than like I had a sandwich today. You put out, you know, your thoughts and just like you know, love was coming in in 2099, yeah. and it's still to this day you get great connections from. That. I do remember the first time I, I wrote, started a blog, and I thought this is. Aw-. I felt egotistical. It felt like it was very self-centered. Yeah. Yeah. How, you know, and I was already on TV, and st- I mean, I was already doing pretty egotistical things, and even then, it felt like 
this is this is like creepy. What is wrong with me that I'm doing this? But I guess you quickly get reinforced that this yeah, is. Yeah, and I think some aspects is like a reaction to um, elections and the way the uh, politics is done in this country. Where they dig up some tiny aspect of someone's life from 12 years ago or 22 years ago where they said something, and I was like. You know what? I work with databases, and I was like, you know, if we were all completely public, like, you know, 20 years from now, especially with, like, Facebook generation, everyone's drunken pictures on there, and people getting fired for it. But, like, 20 years from now, it's going to be ridiculous. You could railroad anybody. So I was thinking when everyone's skeletons are out of their closets, there will be oh, no skeletons mutually in Mutually assured humiliation. Right. <laughs> that's right. You call maybe, it. I love it. I think that's Maybe a the discourse phrase. will raise up, uh, you know, yeah. because Tolerance. we're all... Tolerance yeah. will raise. Yeah. But how many of you have had a stalker? Or a That's true. I mean, you, you have. I, yeah, it you, sucks. You have, I have. Have you? You have. Yep. Psychotic. I have, well. I have as well. Yeah. yeah true and psychotic. And does the testosterone keep you from being <laughs> like? No, no. Uh, it, it happened to me long ago when I was on the radio and TV. I mean, I kind of dealt with that from being a public figure. I think you get. I think it's actually yeah. better the more human you are. I think some. A lot of that comes from being somewhat uh, distant. Distant. Yeah, I got it more right. when I was a columnist in San Francisco than I get it now, and, and it was and it was spookier, I think. So just creepy. You connect with like a hundred thousand people over like a long, you know, whatever micro fame media career online. You know, one in a hundred thousand is going to be off their meds and off their rocker. It sucks when it happens in like the first month or the first right. year of it, but after like five years of it, you're like, yeah, how much of is that a threat? You we know? we have a nut job who's calling our home, who I think has no idea who we are, and so it also can happen randomly. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is like, do I want that one weird person who I totally expect to know exactly where I am in the moment no. or like what I'm buying? I, you know. I can understand that. I, no, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I'm probably, I'm probably home, more. My home address and home phone off the web maybe around 2003 We're, We also or so. live in a little bit of a bubble because we still are talking to a small s subculture that is more higher educated, more normal, uh, more higher functioning. You don't, you're not really, I mean, that's the difference between mainstream media and what we do. When you're on, you know, Entertainment Tonight, yeah. you're talking to everybody and you're much more likely Leo, to Leo, it's even more than that. And, 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 and chat room uh, blush here because you have an incredibly nice audience. Well. I, but I'm serious. I'm sure there's, there's, <laughs> they there's can, another they've been, they, They've been mean. But, they well, no, no. But, but, you know, you take somebody like me, and I have a gray beard in here, and you invite me into, the, into this world, and I'm not part of this world, and there is an incredible welcoming nature to your audience. They're very nice. People stop me here and say, oh, that's I nice. love Twig. That, it's a reflection It really of you. is great. true of the people who gathered around you. Well, that's good. And it's a reflection So we are living in a bubble. Right, it's the Leo bubble. Uh, well, and, and Matt's and I, done a similar thing with Metafilter. I, I and I think yeah. what it yes, is is yes, it's a meritocracy, exactly. right? What what we do is we celebrate merit regardless of uh, other externalities, whether you're a man or a woman or black or white. None of that matters, age or anything. And so when you celebrate merit, I think you attract a certain kind of person, mm -hmm. and you kind of foster that. Boy, I'd love to foster that more globally. I mean, that's a really great way to be. It's not the way the world really works yet, mm -hmm. but. Maybe that maybe you know maybe we're uh, utopianists. Maybe the, a lot of what we're talking about is 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 wishful thinking. But maybe if all you, can you ever happen. do is shut down to the worst common denominator. Yes, you can find a reason to do nothing. Right. That's true. Um, but you got to try and and but try with caution and with mm -hmm. and with wisdom and let and I think you're right, Gina. It's important for us to let people know what the risks are and what the prices are, and then make sure it is their decision. I have to say though that the chat room can be harsh. We've had people come in studio. It's mostly women. And the chat room can make you know per very personal comments that are upsetting to people. This is why I don't look at the chat room. Sorry, chat room. <laughs> I, don't look I, I at can it understand too often. that, and I think you're wise to know uh, what you're. Uh, and I often tell people who come into our studio, okay, we have chat over there, but I, don't look at it. In fact, I sometimes will close it and not have people look at it because it is it can be very difficult. And the truth is, most of us we see one bad thing, even amongst a well, right. hundred great one things. The bad thing always seems like the thing. Right. It's the thing that you see. So sorry, chat room. Most of the chat room is great. Ninety nine point nine percent. I'm the chat great. room's best friend today. I said nothing but nice things about the chat room. These guys are throwing you under the bus. <laughs> Who loves you, chat room? See. The chat room is saying really nice things right now. Yes, they're, 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 they're the showing their the truth they're, is they're, they do love they Gina. Do love yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I, I almost want to say first post because every time I come on camera, they go, boy, you look tired today. And I almost <laughs> want to say, oh, that's the first tired of the day. And it happened today. I came in. The first thing I see is, gee, Leah looks tired. And, uh, you know, it's just you get used to certain things. Right. And you, get, you let it run off of you, you know, right? 
most yeah, of the well, time. Yeah, well, a thick skin is certainly required uh, apparel for a living. But there's a, 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 and the key is there's a benefit to it. Yeah. So it's worth having a thick skin yep. because of the, benef- of the great benefit of, of being more public and so True. forth. Yeah. And part of it is that I know that, that we in media try to clean up the whole world for you and put a box and a bow on it. Absolutely. But the truth is there are bozos in life. There are bozos right. on the internet. And we all know who the bozos we are. We know who the trolls are. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Twits. They're just all... Sorry. <laughs> uh, search engine land writing about U.S. regulators gearing up for a Google ad mob challenge. Of course, Google acquired ad mob... Or is trying uh, to. Or is trying to. $750 million for this, what was it, two-year-old company? Amazing story. Um, why would it be a pro- And by the way, Apple was also bidding for them. Why would it be a problem for Google to acquire AdMob? Isn't it just more of the same? That's the problem, right? It's just, it's just more hegemony in advertising. And um, the, uh, F- the uh, FTC is taking a closer look at the deal. Uh, and of course, the co- competition um, doesn't like it too much because it, it, surprise, it, surprise, yeah, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Should it be blocked? The Google ad mob acquisition does that concentrate too much power in Google's hands? I Google has Android already. Google has mobile. They're mobile, and, and it needs to be able to help support that. And those of us who want to create content for it and support local news on it, ad mob could be helpful to us. So blocking it is a non-market inanity. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that one, man. Do you order, uh, anybody order an iPad? Yeah, Matt's saying oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ordered one Sucker. for every, every employee. <laughs> you ordered a bunch? Yeah. I don't yeah. work for Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking with my CFO about whether we should get one for every employee, and we thought, well, we'll get a couple, we'll try them out, and then maybe we'll see if we want to get How many them. have you ordered so far? Uh, four. Oh, can I work for you or you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with the like, let it come out, see yeah. what people think. That would be the wise but, thing uh, to do. Uh, consumption device. It I know it's not going to be a good creation device, but. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, there's some interesting questions. I had a question on the radio show. A uh, guy who goes around to schools, he's a marine biologist, does presentations, wanted to know there's a, 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 a connector that goes from the iPad to a VGA so you can. Br- Put it, you know, put it out on a projector, and it's got this mobile keynote for ten dollars that they're making. He was wondering, is it going to be able to? Can I do the keynote presentations with it? I said, we don't know, but I, that would be annoying if Apple didn't, you know, sort of keynote presentations, yeah, and demos, yeah. yeah. And it looked pretty cool. Yeah. And if you could do, you know, take, take this little thing with you, have little presentations, plug it in, put it on the screen. I think there might be a. That's just yet another way it could be used. I'm, I'm pretty bullish on it. I can't I wait for just being a tall guy in coach class, not having a keyboard. <laughs> just, like, I'll just have just the screen to watch movies. That's all I want. Um, you know, we're running out of time, Adam. Do you mind if I don't bring Adam on? I mean, he's, he's here. Is it okay with you? Come on over and just say hi. Just say hi. Great to see you, Matt. Thank you so much. We just Thanks, love Matt, Matt Howie. Just right. One of the pioneers of the internet and a great blogger and just a really great guy, but obviously beloved. Adam, hey. nice to see you. Good to see you. So congratulations. That's good. Yeah. Yep. It's complete, a great book. Completewaveguide.com. <laughs> one more plug. And you, when you were on, you said you're also working on a buzz, buzz guide. Yeah. Is that right? No. Oh, that wasn't Adam. That was... Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. He's working on Android. the Android guide. Android. Nobody's doing a buzz guide? <laughs> Come on, maybe you and I, Jeff. I don't know. If they keep adding options, perhaps there, a guide will be required. Necessary. Might, might the title, required. Buzz, what gives? <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, you're, a, you're editor. What is your title again? Editor. Editor, editor at uh, Life Hacker. I think in chief now they added it to the Oh, you're in chief? Yeah. Did you make yeah. any more money from Nick for that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, all right. I'll take it to good. the table. That's very good. <laughs> um, how are you? How's the uh, South by Southwest treating you? you enjoy uh, good so far. Yeah, it's yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, it's been the typical thing. I've been to nary a panel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about. But I've seen a lot of great people, people. and had a yeah. lot of great conversations. That's the new slogan I decided. South by Southwest. It's made of people. It's made of people. How about that? Just like what do you think? I just I just invented that just now. <laughs> so um, let's get to our uh, tip. Tool and a number of the week. Now, Gina, I, I know you were scrambling to get one, but that's why I brought Adam over in case you wanted to Whoa. get him to, to do a tip oh, yeah. for us. Oh, yeah, she says. <laughs> Adam, uh, you got any tips There's, for us? There are a few of them. I was going to do... Oh, yeah, talk about... 
So there's a new Gmail Labs feature. Uh, this is this is good for people who get their pop email in Gmail. Um, it was annoying before. You know, you enter your credentials for a pop account, and it would fetch your email at, at sort of random times. You know, if you got a lot of email, it would do it more often. If you didn't, it wouldn't do very often. So if you go to Gmail Labs now, there's a new Labs feature called I believe it's just called Refresh Pop. Let's see. So you can kind of manually refresh force it. Refresh pop accounts. Yeah, so it adds a link at the top of your inbox. So you click the link, say refresh, and it'll re it will repop your messages from your external accounts. So it makes it easier to kind of consolidate all your accounts in Gmail. That's great. So turn that on. We also, um, do we also bookmark the one about adding this oh. continued quick search box. So quick search box was a, an application Windows. that uh, the guy who made Quicksilver... Uh, oh, I think was right. behind Alcor. when he went to, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nicholas Jitkoff. Yeah. He went to Google and he made it for Macs. And then they released it for Windows as uh, part of the Google toolbar, I believe was the only way you could install it, uh. which is insane because no one wants to install the Google tool no. toolbar. No one wants the toolbar. So it was Sorry. like, if you want this application, it's just like an application launcher, uh, install this toolbar, which is actually like the most backwards. Nobody, I mean, you always unclick uh, installing the like Yahoo Ask.com toolbar <laughs> or whatever when you're installing applications. So anyway, uh, yeah, I guess they've discontinued it from that, but you can still install it. Yeah, the it's trick not, is to install Google Toolbar, move the folder for quick search, then uninstall Google Toolbar. It won't find the folder, but you still have the application. I that feel like is it's so been sad. I, it's been abandoned though, right? Yeah, so that's sad. no one wants to. <laughs> Forget. There's no reason for that. Forget about. If it. I may intrude on Tipland. Please do. Uh, yeah. The uh, uh, new uh, there's a new fast window in Gmail that I haven't been able to use yet, but it, I find it true that I, I, I you know here I am I think in, I, I'm in tab think yeah. within Gmail you're in screen think it drives me nuts so they've created a means to create. Uh, a, a new window using Gmail. And it's Gmail. great, because it's one of those things when it used to be if you popped up a new window, it would do the whole loading thing, uh, and it sucked. Right. And now it's super fast. It's great. I mean, if you do that ever, <laughs> which a lot of people don't. Yeah, but I'm not a new window person, but... I do when I'm trying, when, I'm, when I want to look at an email while I'm composing Gee, another one. How many one. tabs do you have? <laughs> Jesus, I'm Too bad many. at tabs. Too You're many. worse than I am. <laughs> oh, no, many. that's a geek thing, when how many you, yeah, tabs. Yeah, when you can't yeah. read any of the text on the yeah, tabs, exactly. that's when you know. <laughs> <laughs> when it's just the fave icon. <laughs> Uh, actually, Google is here at South by Southwest, according to the official Google blog. Representatives from Google and YouTube are on more than 20 panels. That was a number one. Uh, was it really? No, it's all right. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> I thought you said another number. All that's right. All right. That's all right. Uh, at the Google booth, there are going to be demo. There's a Google booth. I didn't even know there were booths here. Oh, there's booths hidden somewhere. Any swag from Google? Anybody been there? Oh yeah, we yeah. have a we have Google a Maps. Google Maps. We're going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about that. That's, bike. that's one of my two, one of my uh, bike, tools. Bike routes just launched. Yeah. 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 Um, on Sunday, the All Day Hackathon will give you a chance to get your hands dirty and build applications using a variety of. Google Technologies. There'll be prizes, including Android phones, Gina, for the best apps. And They're giving away those phones, man. Yeah, we're back, Leo. All right. So let's get to our uh, number of the week, if you are ready, Mr. Jarvis. Well, if you haven't stolen it by now. I didn't mention it. 99.9, uh, .9, just to get a news update in here, which is uh, the Financial Times says that that is now the odds that Google will, in fact, pull out of China. 99.9%. Wow. How would they know? The odds, is this the betting Sources. Huh. Uh, but uh, that's, that's the word. They we'll still see. haven't set a date. They haven't, are they even negotiating? Evidently, they have been, and it has gone nowhere. Ah. That's what the, what the word is. Going badly. Uh, I forgot what my tool was, but I have a couple of good tools. We mentioned already that Google Maps has biking directions, which is just fantastic. I think that's a wonderful thing for them to add. And Gina has uh, donated a, a tool. This is uh, in the Google Shopping for mobile application. Uh, it's like not even really an application. It's just the mobile version of Google Shopping. Right. Um, they now have an in-stock feature. So if you do a search within your uh, mobile version of Google Shopping. I presume if it, if, if it does it in the mobile version, it ought to do it in the uh, full, full size version. It should, but you there's, there's now, if you do a search for a, a product, you will see whether it's in stock. And if you click the in stock nearby button, it'll show you the stores that have it. Very handy if you're searching for something that will be out of stock, like an iPad or a Wii or something like that. It really works with three vendors. 
So it's pretty oh, small. It's limited. It's a There's another service Sears. that does this already that has yeah. like 25 or something. But, but obviously, once you have it's an a, API, it's pretty yeah. easy to see how yeah. you just add it in. I was I was visiting Best Buy this week, where, which is really fascinating. Best Buy sees itself as becoming a media company, and they are. They sell advertising in circulars. They sell advertising in the stores, end caps, displays, and all this. And 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 work with Google on this kind of stuff at a very local level. You take the disadvantage of retail as brick and mortar becomes an advantage again. And, and it becomes an yeah. And this isn't a great tool, but I think somebody like you in New York would love this. This oh is an my eight God, I bit. Love it's a, a Google Maps mashup. Eight bit NYC. Have you seen this, Jeff? No. It's amazing. As if it's New amazing. York were an eight bit game. It looks like a cross stitch that I want to have on a. On, isn't on it a great? Pillow. Zoom in on that, and let's zoom in on Brooklyn. All right. Brooklyn. Where's Where's Brooklyn here? Uh, it's eight, kind of right and south. Yeah. Brooklyn Heights, Brooklyn yeah. there. All right. Now and we're gonna zoom in. The plus sign is up on the left hand corner there. Oh, I see. Okay. Left-hand corner plus. So as you zoom in, the little block yeah. trees and the little... Oh, it's so I mean, cool. But it's pretty complete. I guess this is I a I want to get the little tiny people, 8-bit people. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And if you're in Austin, by the way, they just launched an 8-bit Austin as well. So we can zoom in on Austin as if it's an 8-bit game. It's the number 8-B-I-T-A-U-S-T-I-N.com. Or if you want to go to 8-bit New York... It's 8, the number 8, B-I-T-N-Y-C dot com. And it's just cool. If you're an old Nintendo player, it's just a, or a Commodore 64 player, it's just a cool cool thing to have. If you pan too far over to New Jersey, it just kind of stops. Hey, <laughs> oh, hey, man. hey. You got a problem with that? <laughs> it goes 16-bit all of a sudden. Hey. It just stops. And credit to Brett Camper, who, uh, who Nothing came but up with because, because the world, world pretty much ends hey, somewhere in New hey, Jersey. watch it, lady. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, it's so fun to have everybody uh, real and live and in person here. Oh, I was going to mention that uh, there's going to be an event. If you're in Austin uh, this after, or tomorrow afternoon, Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon at the uh, co-working facility where we are, the uh, Texas co-working facility, there's going to be an open Linux event from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. So come if you'd like to come to that. It's open to, uh, is it open to badge holders only or anybody? Anybody into the open source thing? Anarchists, so they don't yeah, care about your anarchists. badge. We do really want to thank the folks at the Texas Coworking uh, Facility for letting us be here. You really great space, really a great a host, Paul. Beautiful Paul, space uh, and uh, the gang uh, let us use it. And uh, thanks especially to New Tech who uh, brought their TriCaster HD and the cameras and the setup. Uh, really nice of you to let us use this for our uh, broadcast today. Um, thanks to Gina Trapani. We were so glad to thanks have so you here. Happy. So nice to see you. So Congratulations good to shake on the your book. Hand, give you a big hug. Oh, I got such a nice hug. <laughs> the book is out. CompleteWaveGuide.com. Uh, it's a three bones thing, and uh, <laughs> that's what it says on the back. I'm just reading the back. <laughs> three ones, three ones. <laughs> it's not a. That's not a B. That's a one. It's a, it's a three. Well, three ones. B O N S. It looks publisher. like a B. Are you sure? Three. <laughs> I thought it was a Jones thing. It's a Jones a thing. We were reading way that's too much into that logo. My, uh, <laughs> yeah. My publisher. Three ones. Three ones. Three, three ones. Dot not com. three bones. Not three bones. But if you see something that looks like three bones, that's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> Gina and her uh, her co-author Adam Pash. Nice to have you here, Adam. Yeah, too. We really appreciate guys. it. Gina Trapani, of course, is at uh, smarterware.org. That's her blog and a great place to read regularly. Jeff Jarvis is at buzzmachine.com, associate professor of journalism at the uh, City University of New York. And great to finally meet you face so to face. So nice to meet you, too. Jeff, by the way, is the walking wounded. He had surgery yesterday and still came. I can't believe it. I have little Frankenstein. You do. Scars. You, have, you have stitches Both there. I've been here. staring at that. They, did they, they did they take the nodes out? What did they the... took out uh, arteries? Oh wow! To test the arteries, I have inflamed arteries. And they chose that very public place to take them. Uh, yep, that's where they do it. But I'm on drugs. I'm feeling better. The last two shows, I was sick, and you didn't even know it. But, really? Oh yeah. well, I'm glad you're feeling better. And that's Jeff great. is very tall. <laughs> we have confirmed. As they say here in Texas, he's a tall drink of water. <laughs> we thank you for joining us. We hope we'll see you next week back in studio. Or this week in Google, I'm Leo Laporte. Have a great week.